Hey guys, we're going to go step by step and show you how to assemble our single chamber bat house. Now this is our new single chamber bat house kit and this is what comes in the box. The front, the back, two sides, a roof panel, you'll get a little deco bat, some instructions, uh, the screws that you need to put it together, and you'll also get two small nails you can use to secure the deco bat on the front, and then we generally include a little pamphlet about bats in there. Those vary over time as we get different things, we throw something in the box. Now for the tools that you're going to need, you're going to need, of course, a drill. Uh, would be very helpful. You need to pre-drill with a number 8 pre-drill bit and then you need a Phillips driver bit for it. And what we're using today is a, uh, called a DeWalt flip bit and we we really like these. We use them in our workshop. It lets one drill quickly change between the two bits that you need to work with instead of having to uh, unchuck and chuck the bit over and over. It's really nice. You'll need a caulk gun with some caulk just a good exterior grade paintable caulk. You want to make sure it's paintable. That's the main requirement. Color doesn't matter. You're going to paint over it. I'm using black because black's in the gun and I'm too lazy to go change it. Actually black's in the gun and we have some white caulk that's unopened and this will work just fine. So we're going to be using that. Then it's a good idea to have some paper towels around. You might even get you a little cup of water so you can clean the caulk up and rub with it. I'm not going to worry with that today. I'm just going to use a paper towel here. So the first thing that you want to do, of course, is make sure everything's with your kit. If it's not, you can give us a call or shoot us an email and we'll take care of it. You can lay the front and the two roof panels to the side. Take the back of your back house and just lay it out in front of you. I'm going to take the two sides and you're going to start you can dry fit this first to make sure that you understand how it goes together but we're going to start by putting the sides in like this so get those where they go and then run a small bead of caulk it doesn't take much right down the side here so you can see what I did and I'll be going slow today. You can go at any pace that's comfortable for you. Once you've put a few of these together, you can put them together real quick. But today I'm just going to go slow, take the time, and enjoy the process, which is what it's all about. I put it down and gently rock it back and forth. There's a little bit of play in this tab and slot that's by design so that it'll fit in and you can rock it back and forth and get that caulked to fill the voids there real good. If you don't think you got enough caulk on, take it off, add a little bit more. If you get too much on, it's going to squeeze out the side, that's fine. You can wipe that up later or you can even let it dry and take you a small putty knife or a knife or something and cut it right off later. But for the side, when you put it on, you are going to want to bring this side up flush to this dado. The slot in the back is called a dado. So once we get that one in, we're just going to repeat the process on the other side here. Again, don't worry about putting on too much. It will squeeze out, no problem. But it doesn't take too terribly much to do that. And push this down, get a little squeeze out again. That's not a problem at all. So once we have the sides in, make sure they're even here. You'll get a chance to adjust this a few times, but I like to do it as I go to make sure that we don't get off track anywhere. Now we've got the sides caulked in. It's time to put caulk on the front of the side here. So all we're going to do is put that same bead. And my cameraman there can zoom in on this one while I do the other one so you can see exactly where I placed that. And you want to start all the way at the top and you want to run down to about where the curve starts. Because we've got this rounded over. 
Now you can pick your front up. It's ready to go on. While you're doing this, check in the slots. Make sure there's no sawdust or anything in here. I'd already done that, but make sure there's no sawdust in the slots, anything that'll stop it from going together. Sometimes there can be. You can just fish that out and knock it around. Use a screw and dig it out if you need to like that. This one's clean and ready to go. We try to make them all that way, but sometimes we miss a little bit uh, of sawdust here and there. It's just the nature of what we're doing. Take the front and put it on. Now be careful doing this and don't pinch your fingers because right now while it's collapsing, if, if you have your fingers in here and push down, you can pinch your fingers. and That hurts a little bit. I do that quite often with all the other bat houses. Just getting in a rush sometimes. Fingers can get in the way. Now when you put the front on, if you can get a close up here, you're going to want the front to stick up above the side, just like that. That's by design. The way this works is if you have the front on and it's locked into the side, if you push the front up just about as far as it'll go, it will stop moving at about the right distance. And you're going to want that gap there. You're going to want this so that it'll fit into the roof. And I'll show you that in a moment. We're not going to end up in it with a gap in the bat house itself, but we do want this front to stick up above the side slightly. Now the roof is the most complicated part of this kit actually, and it's still pretty simple. There's two halves to the roof. One is longer than the other. They both have dados. This dado is captured on both ends, and this one runs out on this end. What I like to do is to start with the longer one. You can, you can do either one first once you understand how this works. Whichever way you're comfortable doing this, you're free to do this. So what we're going to do is caulk first. Now we still have not put any screws in this at this point. Um, but we want to do that now. Okay. Back up. Edit, edit this in. Now, once you've made sure that the front is sticking up above this, like we discussed, it's time to pre-drill and put the screws in the front to hold it in place. Now, as you're pre-drilling, check this first. Check this front on the side. Make sure it is still sticking up on both sides and you're good to go. Now, you simply take your pre-drill bit, the number eight, and you're going to pre-drill this hole just far enough that when this screw is put in, it's going to be flush or slightly below the surface. So let's pre-drill those. Just take time here. Now this bit, we'll flip it over, we'll have our driver bit ready, and we'll put the screws in. There we go. Now this drill has a torque setting. I'm going to turn that down to 5. And what that'll do is that'll keep me from overdriving. You can hear that torque kick in and the clutch kicks in and it stops it from over tightening the screw. When I'm pre-drilling, you want to have that very high or locked so that there's no clutch, no torque set in there. But when you're putting the screws in, it can be helpful if, you're, if your drill has that. Let's put these in the other side here. go. Now the front's on, screwed into the sides, but remember it's not secured to the back yet. That's okay. We're going to do that. But now it's time to put the roof on. 
And the whole point of this project is to enjoy what you're doing and not fight with the parts or the kits or trying to figure anything out. And that's what we hope you get out of it. For putting the roof on, it's fairly straightforward. The first thing that you need to do is caulk. You can go ahead and caulk the entire area here where there's going to be seams. Bring this up to the peak there. Now we do want to add caulk here. Make sure this gets bridged completely. Add a little bit here. I'll go ahead and repeat that on this side. There we go. A little bit there. Then for this, I'll run a bead right in the back. Messy's fine. It's not a problem. Get a little bit on the kit there. We're going to paint it. There we go. And that's all there is to that. Now here's the roof panels. One's longer than the other. They both have dados in them, slots here. Uh, one is open and the other one's got a captured end, the longer one. I like to put the longer one on first. You can do it in any order that's comfortable for you, but I like to put the longer one on first. What I do is I set it into the slot in the back, slide it up. Sometimes you need to, to just give a little bit of pressure to the front here. This one went on without it. And put that in. I'm going to turn that so you can see that a little bit better. Let me open that back up for you so you can see what happened. Put it into the back slot, slide it up, just slide it in so that it, that slot goes right over the roof. That's why this front is a little bit higher than the side, is to allow that front to slide into the roof. Okay? And once we have that one, I'm going to put the shorter one on. And you can start down here and slide it all the way up, but now that you have caulk in it, you would be dragging the caulk all the way up. So start fairly close to the top, inch or two. Put it in the back slot. Let me turn this so you can see the view here. Put it in the back slot and slide it up. Then you, you pull out a little bit if you need to and pull the top up until it meets there. Okay? Now at this point, pull it back down just a little bit. Let's leave a gap there because we're going to put caulk in that gap. And I like to do it this way. You can do it before you put it in, but I find that gets messy. I, I inevitably somehow get it on me. So what I like to do is now that it's in here is to fill this with caulk, not fill it, but put a small bead of caulk in here and pull that down. Now it's in place. There we go. That's a lot of caulk, but that's okay because we want to make sure if any joint on this bat house gets sealed good, it needs to make sure that it's going to be this one because this is the one most exposed to the sun and to the rain. So we're going to make sure that's good. Again, don't worry about the excess. That'll wipe off or cut off if you let it dry first. Totally up to you. At this point, slide it around. Make sure the fit's good. You can even check here, looking out on the ends, looking here. Make sure everything looks like it should be. If not, you've still got an opportunity to slide it around. Remember, the front is on, but it's not screwed into the back, so you can actually slide this whole panel around just a little bit here to get the fit that you want. So I think that fit is good. I'm happy with that. So now we're going to pre-drill and put the roof panel on. Okay, let me see you can see what I'm doing. I've got it where I want it, so I'm going to hold it in place and I'm pushing down a little bit this way, but mainly down, and I want to make sure that I keep it from moving the best I can, and just drill slow. You don't have to go fast. And when you do the roof, drill these countersinks a little bit deeper. On the roof, 
you really want the screw head to be below the surface because we're going to add some caulk into that when we get done to make sure we have a nice watertight seal on the top. screws in before I drill the other side. Now you can see these screws are countersinking in further. They're below the surface and it's okay if you put them out flush we're still going to rub caulk on them but if you drill them down just a little bit over we'll have a nice little bit of caulk on top of that to make it waterproof. Now I like to do one side then the other because now I know this side's not going to move. Because I know this side won't move, it's in there, I can push up on this one and make sure that I've got a nice tight seal and plenty of caulk in there. Get our two screws ready here. Now when you're drilling the roof, Make sure that you're drilling. Oop, my drill's coming loose here. Torque that back down. Make sure you're drilling perpendicular with the roof panel. We don't want to drill this way or up like this. That would be wrong. We would come out inside the bat house. If you go too low, which we can't do on this table, but if you tilt it too low, you come out the front. So you want to make sure that it's perpendicular to the roof, level, and just go straight in. Same thing here. There we go. I want to actually, if you find you want it to go a little deeper, that's fine. Just take the screw back out. Drill a little, little deeper and put the screw back in. Remember, this isn't a race. We're not in a rush. We're wanting to build it and build it right. So now the front is on, the roof panels are on, but the back's not on. So when you go to flip it over, be careful. Don't pick it up by the front. I'm going to wipe that off a little bit so it doesn't get on my workbench too bad go. So I'm picking it up by the back, lifting the whole back house. Keep it squeezed together. Now it won't just fall apart, but it will come apart. If I try to lift it by this, I'll pull the back right off. We don't want to do that yet. So now that we flipped it over, lay it down on the table, push on it a little bit, make sure that the fit's good, the caulk's squeezed in. Now, at this point, the back will still slide around just a little bit, not much. So if you see that something doesn't quite look like it's fitting right, you might be able to move it just a tad to be able to get that to go. But it looks good here, so we're going to pre-drill all of the holes, sides and the roofs. Pre-drill them, and remember when you're drilling, this is at an angle. You can hang this off the end of your workbench if you want to so that it's lying flat. I like to do it this way. Just remember to drill perpendicular to the bat house. You don't want to drill this way. We want to get a slight tilt to match the level that the bat house is leaning at. So. There we go. Flip our drill over and put our screws in. And there we go. So the last step, putting your bat house together, is finishing up the caulk on it. You can take the bat house here. And you can use your finger. In my case, I'm going to use a little putty knife. Kind of wipe the caulk here. Here. Get any debris or sawdust that may have 
fallen in there. There we go. And we want to add some caulk to the roof to make sure that it's watertight and we can't get any penetration by the water there. So we're going to run a bead here. Just a small bead to fill in any gaps. Just like that. And then fill in those screw holes to make sure that they're nice and secure. Doesn't matter if it's a little messy, we're going to paint over it. Then again you can use your finger. I'm going to use a putty knife, which you can do too. Just kind of smooth those off. And if you find that it's uneven, you can come back and caulk it again after this dries. It's not a problem. We'll rub that there. Grab these smooth. That looks good. And then for the bead in the back, make that a nice round bead. I'll just run my finger over it. That presses it into the wood, makes a nice round bead out of it. Feel free to caulk all the seams and joints that you want to. You can certainly do these. Not as important as doing that one in the back, but certainly it can be done up under there. You can even come in and fill this and fill it in the back if you like. Some people even fill all of the screw holes and cover up all of the heads with caulk. That's fine if that's what you want to do. Not really necessary. Again, the only part of what I'm doing now that I kind of consider a requirement is this top bead and filling in these top holes this part and this. That's, that's kind of necessary. The rest of this, to be honest, isn't really necessary, but you can certainly do it. It'll help the paint job look a little bit better. And a little bit of extra weatherproofing can't hurt. Use your finger to Smooth it right out. Turn this over the other side, same way. Nice bead of caulk there. Same thing there. And that's really all there is to it. It's ready to paint. The instructions include information on how to paint, your color choices, where to hang the bat house. We also have other videos available that will go over the same information with you, but that's the assembly step by step. It's easy to do, so if you want to get your own bat house kit, you can check us out at www.habitatforbats.org or go to eStore.habitatforbats.org and purchase your own single chamber kit.